Hello everyone and welcome to the DevScope channel. Join me today as we learn more about Power BI Desktop Developer Mode. So in this first video we're going to take a look at the file folder structure of the Power BI project files and also how to incorporate source control with this new feature of Power BI. We're going to do so locally with a git repo and also with a remote git host that in this case will be Azure DevOps. So here we have a standard pbix file and now we want to save this as a pbip. To do so we have to enable a preview feature so we have to go over to file, options and settings, options and finally over here on the preview features we have to enable the Power BI project save option. So now we can save this file as a PBIP. To do so, go over again to file, now save as, and on the save as type you select the Power BI project files extension, and uh, I personally recommend that you create a new folder to keep all the new files and folders created organized. I've already done that, so we can select the folder, and now we can save this PBIX as a PBIP. Saving, OK, we no longer need this PBIX file. And if we go over to the, to the folder, the sales PBIP, we can see that we have new files and folders created. To take a better look at these files, let's just open the folder with Visual Studio Code. So here we are. As you can see, our first folder, it's the sales analysis dataset. As you would expect, it, it gathers all the information regarding the dataset. However, the most important file over here will be the model.bim file. If you're not already familiar with this type of file, it basically contains all the metadata necessary to build the dataset. Everything from tables, relationships, measures, and all of that. You can edit this file, for example, here on Visual Studio Code, the normal text editor, and also with tabular editor, which will be a more user-friendly experience. Next up, we have the sales analysis.report folder. Once again, as you'd expect, contains all the information regarding the report. Uh, in this case, the most important file is the report.json file in this folder. So this file will contain everything related to the reporting part from visuals to page layout and intended interaction. So most of the information regarding the reporting part of Power BI will be stored over here on this file. Next, we have the .git ignore file. What this file basically does, it tells git to simply ignore these two files and any changes that are made to them. In this case, the first file, local settings.json, exists both in the dataset and report folder and it stores uh, information regarding the local user and the local machine and this type of information is not of any importance to have committed and stored in a, in a REPL so we ignore the file and any changes made to it. Next we have the cache.abf file this is basically a local cached copy of the model and data when it was last edited in this case we we don't want to store data, only metadata, so we also ignore this file and any changes made to it. Finally, we have the sales.pbip file that basically allows us to access all the information within the dataset and report folders through the Power BI desktop application. So this is the Power BI project file folder structure, file and folder structure. Now we can go over to the source control part of the video. So if you go over here to this icon, that is a source control icon for Visual Studio Code, you will have this option to initialize a repository. If you don't have Git installed, it will appear a rectangle saying to install Git. However, I've already done that, so we can initialize the repository. Once we initialize the repository, it will detect that every file is a new file because we haven't made yet a commit on this repo. So we're going to do just that. We're going to do our initial commit. 
and can press commit. In this case, we would like to stage all of our changes and commit them directly since this is our initial commit. To take a look on the commits, I use an extension that is the Git graph extension so you can see better in, uh, in this graphical manner all the commits done to every branch on the repo. So here we are, we have our initial commit. Now let's take a look on how do the changes on the PBIP file reflect on the dataset and report folders. So let's open the PBIP file. We have to over here and now open the PBIP file. In this first case, I will basically add a new filter to the, to the report and see how those changes are reflected in the folders. So here we are. In this case, we already have a filter for year, but we want to add one for product. In this case, now we can take year out of here and add product. Here we have it. So we can save the PVIP file. And now if we go over to the Visual Studio code, we can see that there was a change detected on the report.json file. As you can see over here, it was added this, th these lines that basically have all the information regarding that new filter that I've added. In this case, since we were working with the reporting part, that change was uh, stored over here on the report.json. Now we can commit this new change. In this case, we have added the product product filter and you can also uh, stage the changes individually in this case we already we only have one so we can stage first the changes we want to commit we can close the working tree and now we can commit this new change so as you can see over here now we have two versions of this set of files so if you ever want to go back to a previous version, you can do so because you're using source control, in this case, git. So let's take a look at another change done in the PVIP. In this case, we're going to add a new, a new measure. So let's add over here, new measure. And in this case, we want to know the number of cells. We're going to count rows going to count rows of the financial stable. In this case, we're just going to add a new measure. That's it. And save the PVIP file. Now, going back to Visual Studio Code, we can see that there was a change detected, but this time in the model.bim file because we are dealing with a new measure and as you can see here it has all the information regarding the new measure so we can now do a new commit in this case we're going to say that we have added the sales measure and we can commit and stage and commit it directly And now, as you can see, we have the new commit done over here. So right now, we're just working with a local repo. Now we're going to check how to do this with a remote git host, how to configure a remote git, a remote git host. So I have, uh, as I said in the, in the beginning, we're going to use Azure DevOps as a remote git host. I've already configured uh, a project over here. You just have to make sure that you have access to the repos. And once you're over here, you will see this uh, link, this URL that you will copy. And then over on Visual Studio Code, you're going to add a remote. To do so, you're going to go over here to the, these three little dots, then remote option, and finally add remote. You're going to paste the link you have copied and select the add remote from URL. Now we're going to give a name. Let's call it 
origin now we have the remote kit host configured now we can simply publish the branch and it's done so if we go back to Azure DevOps just refresh the page you can see that here are all the files of our local REPL. By connecting your local Git REPL to a remote Git host, like Azure DevOps in this case, enables you to work with multiple individuals seamlessly on the same Power BI project. And this is the main advantage of having a remote Git host connected to your local Git REPL. So this was the first part of the video. In the next one, we will cover the integration of Git with Fabric. That is all for today, don't forget to like, subscribe and stay tuned for future videos.